Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and we are going to be taking a completely different direction with this channel. Today, we're going to be reading a book. This is a Let's Read of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This is a classic Indiana Jones movie, but obviously, due to copyright reasons, I can't show you the movie. That would be illegal for me to do, or at the very least, we get my channel shut down very easily. So instead, we're going to make a little audio-visual book reading of this book. Because why not? Illustrated with more than 60 color photographs based on the movie starring Harrison Ford. I'll make sure to show you guys those photographs. Alright, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Dune, a tale of high adventure. Story adaptation by Les Martin, Random House, New York. Based on the film Indiana Jones and the Temple of Dune, Dune, whoops, Doom. Screenplay by Willard Huck and Gloria Katz. Story by George Lucas. TM and copyright 1984 Lucasfilm Limited, LFL. All rights reserved under international and Pan American copyright conventions. Published in the United States by Random House Incorporated, New York, and simultaneously in Canada by Random House of Canada Limited, Toronto. Library of Congress cataloging and published publication data. Martin Less, 1934. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. A tale of high adventure. Summary. While trying to recover a sacred stone belonging to an Indian village, Indiana Jones and his two companions become prisoners of a ruthless sect dedicated to the worship of the evil goddess Kali. Adventure and Adventurers Fiction Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom Motion Picture Title PZ7.M36353IN1984 84-1966 ISBN 0-394-86389-5 Manufactured in the United States of America one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. I'm not making out that's what it says on the page, people. Here, I'll just uh, zoom in so you can uh, see there. See? Told you. I was not making any of that up. That's what the book is about, people. But no, seriously, that's just the beginning shit that usually happens when you read a book. So let's go ahead and start with chapter one. The day... That Short Brown tried to pick Indiana Jones' pocket on a crowded Shanghai street was the luckiest day in the young Chinese boy's life. The luck began when Indiana didn't turn Short Round over to the police. Instead, he listened to Short Round's story. And when Indy heard that Short Round had lost his family in a Japanese air raid and stole only to keep from starving, Indy offered Short Round a job as a local guide and general handy boy. Even better, Indy promised to take Short Round with him to America when the daredevil archaeologist wrapped up his work in China. As a head start, Indy gave Short Round a Yankee baseball cap and taught Short Round the vital American skill of driving a car. Short Round proudly wore that baseball cap now as he sat at the wheel of a new cream-colored 1934 Doisenberg convertible touring car in the early hours before dawn. The car was parked next to Shanghai's most lavish night spot, the Club Obi-Wan. Indy had gone into the Obi-Wan to deliver a box of ancestral ashes he has uncovered for a big wig named Lao She and to collect his pay. As soon as Indy came out, they were going to drive to the airport. Thinking about the trip to America, Short Round sank back into the softly yielding leather of the driver's seat and closed his eyes. If this was a dream, he never wanted to wake up. Loud as a pistol shot, the sound of smashing glass woke Short Round to the fact that life with Indiana Jones had one little drawback. Sudden, violent danger. An enormous rolling metal gong crashed through a floor-to-ceiling window on the third floor of the nightclub and bounded down the sloping tile roof. 
It was followed by the rolling intertwined figures of a man and a woman. The pair tumbled into the edge of the roof and went over into empty air. Observe the pictures on this page, people. Observe pictures. Okay. Readjust the focus. I like to manually focus because I don't know. <laughs> it's just easier to do for me. Because my camera is really loud when it autofocuses. Just one thing stopped them from splattering onto the pavement. The Doisenberg convertible. Its leather top cushioned their fall as they went through it. And the thickly padded upholstery of the car's back seat saved them from anything worse than bruises. Instantly, Indiana Jones disengaged himself from the terrified woman still clinging to him. Step on it, Short Round, he said. Okie dokie, Indy, said Short Round. Hold on to your potatoes. As the car shot into full speed, Short Round wondered who their female passenger was. But right now, with a black sedan full of gunmen already in pursuit and bullets whistling past the Doisenberg, there wasn't time to find out. The night that Willie Scott met Indiana Jones at the Obi-Wan was the unluckiest night of the beautiful blonde singer's life. Willie saw it that way anyway, and she was an expert on bad luck. Willie's singing career had bogged down into the economic depression swamping America. Her bid to become a big hit in the Far East had been a bust. And her plan to find a wealthy oriental potente to yank her out of her rut and put her on a solid gold pedestal had not gotten off the ground. That was why she had temporarily hooked up with... Oh, I forgot to show the pictures. There's over 60 illustrations in this book here. And you're going to see them, people. See, look at those nice, beautiful pictures. Alright, hmm. fix the camera here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Lao Shea. Lao called himself a merchant prince. Everyone else called him a crime lord. But whatever he was, he had enough money to keep alive Willie's dreams of a future filled with champagne and diamonds, even if he hadn't yet made them come true. Now Indiana Jones had turned those dreams into a nightmare. She first saw this oddball archaeologist when she finished her number on the Obi-Wan stage and joined Lau and his henchmen at their table. Indy was there, Indiana was there, squabbling about some ashes he was delivering to Lau Shea, and the payment of a wad of cash and a glorious diamond that Lau refused to hand over. Before Willie could beat a retreat, she was in the middle of a battle royale. The wild melee left the ashes. We'll just go ahead and do this. Hopefully I won't adjust the focus this time. At least too much. Let's see, nice beautiful pictures. Tap. Okay, I think that'll work. Let's turn the page. Scattered, a Chinese friend of Indiana's dead. Indiana poisoned. The air filled... Wait, did I skip a page? No? Okay. <laughs> the air filled with a cloud of balloons that Indiana released to screen himself from flying bullets. And the diamond knocked off the table and onto a nightclub floor. Instantly, Willie was on her hands and knees hunting the most precious stone she had ever lusted for. She thought she saw it glinting and grabbed what turned out to be a vial containing the antidote that could save Indiana's life. It was then that Willie made her big mistake. When Indiana seized a sword from the statue of a warrior to battle, a thug waving a machine gun, and then slashed a cord that held a giant gong suspended, Willie grabbed that vial. As the gong crashed down and went bounding away, Indiana grabbed her. Struggling, they rolled after the gong onto the window and down the sloping roof. Willie was screaming at the top of her lungs as it went over the edge and fell. Where? Dazed, Willie realized she was in the back seat of a speeding car, and a small boy wearing a baseball cap was at the wheel. 
Willie was sure of only one thing in the world gone wacko. Her luck couldn't get worse. Willie was wrong. Can't get the focus on this stupid picture. <laughs> I might just set it to autofocus. Why not? I'll give it a try. Okay. As Indiana Jones gulped the antidote he had recovered from Willie and felt the burning in his gut begin to fade, he figured he had stretched his luck to the limit. Good planning had to take him the rest of the way out of this jam. Willie, though, had different concerns. Look what you've done to me, she said. My lipstick smeared. I've broken two nails. I've got a run in my stocking. I'm a total mess. If Lau gets his hands on you after you let me get that antidote, you'll find out what being a mess really means, said Indy, as he pulled out a pistol to trade shots with the black sedan hot on their trail. Pausing to reload his weapon, he said to the driver, Shorty, you call the airport? Sure, Indy, said Short Round, not taking his eyes off the Shanghai street maze. He was zooming in through scattering cars, rickshaws, and pedestrians. Got three seats for you, me, and Wuhan. Wuhan's not coming, said Indy, wincing at the memory of his sidekick lying dead on the nightclub floor. Don't worry, Indy, said Short Round. Short Round number one Barty God now. We've got someone to use this ticket, though, said Indy. Me? Willie protested. She heard a bullet whiz close past the window. Me, she agreed. She didn't change her mind again until she saw the plane that was waiting at the airport. No way I'd travel on a cargo plane loaded with live chickens, she said. I'm a star. I go first class. Suit yourself, said Indy. He grabbed his valise and ran with short round to the Trimador plane. Uh, tr tri-motor plane. I don't know why it's a Trimador. <laughs> his propellers were already spinning. Willie took one quick look at the black sedan coming through to the airport gate. Hey, wait up, she shouted. Lao Shea gazed with helpless rage as the plane's taking off. Then the fury on his face melted into a smile. By the light of dawn, he could read the bold letters on the plane's body. Lao Shea Air Freight. As Lao went to radio his orders to his plane's crew, his smile broke into a shark-like grin. Indiana Jones and his friends had finally run out of luck. Okay, and that was the end of chapter one of this thrilling adventure for Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Read. Be sure to tune in next time when we cover chapter two, where I will show you the picture. Just kidding. April Fool's. Dow Phoenix out. <laughs>